Welcome to Storytime at the Ecotarium. My name's Kathy, and we're going to be reading a book called The Greedy Python. The author is Richard Buckley, and the illustrator is Eric Carl. And we'd like to thank Simon & Schuster for allowing us to read this book online. After I read the book, we'll be joined by my co-worker, Joanne, who has a surprise guest visitor for us to meet. But I can't tell you who it is. You'll have to wait and see. All right, are we ready? The Greedy Python. By Richard Buckley, illustrated by Eric Carl. And thank you to Simon & Schuster. Half hidden in the jungle green, the biggest snake there has ever been. Looped back and forth and in between. Look at those loopy loops. Looks just like the colors of the tree's leaves. The giant snake was very strong and very, very, very long. He had a big, huge appetite, and his belly stretched from left to right. Look at that giant mouth. Whoa. He quickly gobbled in one bite all animals that came into sight. A mouse that hurried to and fro. A frog that jumped up from below. Look at those big, long legs for jumping. Big toes. A bat that hung from his left toe. Can you hang from your left toe? I know I can't. A fish that swam a bit too slow. I bet I could swim like that fish. I am a very slow swimmer. A bird that flew a bit too low. Oh no! A porcupine. Still half asleep. What is that porcupine covered in? Prickly quills. Ouch! Ouch! A monkey who was in mid leap. He's got long arms, long legs, a long tail. A leopard sitting in a tree, and a buffalo who came to see. Is. Those are huge animals. Leopard, a buffalo. I mean, they're bigger than me. An elephant, complete with trunk, was swallowed in a single chunk. I am too big for you, he cried. Oh, no, you're not, the snake replied. Look at that. Those are huge. Those are ginormous. At last, the python's meal was done. And he lay resting in the sun. I'm sorry, that does not look like a snake to me. Here's his head, but look at his whole body. It's full of animals. Oh my goodness. The animals inside of him began to jump and fly and swim. Imagine that happened in your belly. Yeah, it was a. And when they all began to kick, the snake began to feel quite. He coughed the whole lot up again, each one of them, and there were ten. Should we count them? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you imagine eating ten things? An elephant, a buffalo, a leopard, a monkey, a porcupine, a fish, a bird, a mouse, a frog, and a bat? That's a lot. And soon he felt better, and what is more, he was hungrier than before. What? He had not learned a single thing. His greed was quite astonishing. Well, what is he going to eat? Oh my goodness, I just don't know. He saw his own tail, long and curved, and thought that lunch was being served. He closed his jaws on his own rear, then swallowed hard, you ready, and disappeared. The end. Hi there. 
So this is Gur, and Gur is a corn snake. And you can see he's got a beautiful pattern on his underside. So this is not a snake that you're going to find here in Massachusetts. They're actually native to New Jersey and on down south to Florida, and then out further west as well. And he, like the python in our book, is a constrictor, which means that he squeezes his prey until, he, until it starts, stops breathing, and then he'll swallow it whole. So while Cappy is doing the craft, we're going to let Gurr climb on this tree. Alrighty. So the craft we're going to make today is our very own snake. And you don't need a, you only need a couple materials. You need a paper plate, a pair of scissors, a string of any length of your choosing, and then maybe uh, some crayons or markers, or if you want to make more of a 3D decoration, a glue stick or glue or tape, some sort of adhesive, and then I have some colorful tissue paper. But of course, you could use construction paper, or you could just color your own paper with your markers. So we're going to make a spirally 3D snake that you can hang. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is just cut our spiral. Probably helps if you have sharper scissors. As you can see, I'm just cutting the spiral. What is our friend doing back there? Can you see him? is exploring his tree, we are going to make a, another snake. And you can make it as spirally as you want. You can make really fat spirals like I did, or really thin spirals. But here's the head, and here's the tail, and in between is a very long body. So the next thing we're going to do pencil or a pen or any part of the scissors to make just a little bit of a hole. If you have a hole punch, that would probably be the easiest. And then we're going to take our string, use yarn, you can use a pipe cleaner, whatever you want. Basically something that you're going to slip through the hole so that you can hang up your snake wherever you want, in your room or in your house or on a doorknob. Now the next thing I'm going to do so if I had some markers or crayons, I might draw all kinds of colorful scales since the snake is a reptile. But I wanted to do something a little bit 3D. So I have some colored pieces of tissue paper. And I'm just going to make a little spot there with the glue. Stick on my, oops, my paper. I'm going to make a bit of a pattern. So I noticed that Gur has a pattern. Did anyone notice his pattern? Or like, uh, I don't know, Joan, how would you describe that pattern? What would you think? Well, I think on the underside, he actually looks like corn. Oh, he looks like corn. Kind of like those corn kernels. Mm -hmm. yep. Excellent. A bit of a checkerboard pattern, maybe? Mm -hmm. And then on the top, it has those, it looks like little spots. Maybe some circles up there, too. Some circles. Okay, so you could decorate your snake to look just like her with those different colored spots and circles. Make a pretty pattern. You could draw on your scales. If you had stickers, you could put some stickers on your snake. And you can make it any design you want, because after all, this is your snake. So make any type of design you want. Okay, so it's starting to look, starting to take shape. I'm going to do one more. Then I'll show you something else. So this is a very easy craft and kind of fun to make. Now your spiral 
sneak. Here's one that a friend did a number of years ago, so it made a much thinner spiral. So when you hang it, it'll swirl in the breeze, so you could hang it outside. Okay, and do a little bit of a wind charm outside. Kind of a silent one. Things aren't terribly noisy. But they are awfully pretty. They come in all different sizes and shapes and patterns and colors. Things I wanted to show you was this snake skeleton and compare it to our spirally snake. Oops. Remember, I said a snake has a head. So, where's the head here? There it is. So, they've got a bone in their head called the skull, which rests in the midship. And they have a tail, which is down here. But in between is a really long body. And if you look at the snake, there's the head. The tail is way up here, where the ribs end. That's where the tail begins. But everything in between is the body. So the snake has three kinds of bones. The skull, which is in the head. The vertebrae, which are all those little pieces of backbone that all stack up together. Go all the way down through the tail. And then the ribs are those very skinny bones that stick off to the side. So no arm bones, no leg bones, just those three bones. Now in our story, the snake ate all kinds of things, an elephant, a buffalo, a leopard. In real life, a snake of this size could not eat those large items. They can basically eat things twice the size of their head. So the jaw expands both up and down, right? So it can expand this way. And it also can expand left to right. right? They don't have a fused jaw like mammals do. So their mouth can get really big. So they can swallow things up to twi twice the size of their head. But it has to be able to fit into their body. Now their body will also expand, but there is certainly a limit to how big an item a snake can eat. So what does Gur like to eat? Do you know? Uh, I think mice every couple of weeks. They offer the wildlife staff, which is a fantastic group of people here at the aquarium. They offer him a couple of mice to eat. And most oftentimes snakes will eat when they are offered out in the wild. He would certainly eat whenever he could. So a corn snake out in the wild would eat a variety of small mammals like rodents, mice, and small rats. Bowls, right? so small furry animals, and then they also might eat gurs, so pretty good tree climbers, as you can see, who is on this tree here. They live in um, kind of like rocky hillsides and they like to cruise around stone walls, but they're also found in farms and fields okay, where corn might be growing. Hmm, if they eat mice, why do they hang out in a cornfield? What do you think? Is that where the mice are? Could be. Yes, yes. They are. So they'll eat a variety of small mammals and birds. Do you think it would be easy to see Gur outside if he were outside in a field or a stone wall? Wow, look at those patterns and colors on him. I think he is very well camouflaged. I like to call that the big C. Camouflage, where you blend in with your surroundings. I think he would be very difficult to find. What do you think, Joy? Especially in a rock wall or someplace like that, mm. yes, he would blend in very well. He's even kind of blending in on this tree. I know. I've seen him on the stage at the Ecotarium with the wildlife staff on this tree, and I have seen guests walk by and not even notice there was a snake on the tree. Because when he's still, he's hard to see. So I think he blends in very well. A survival strategy that works very well for snakes. All right, thanks for coming to Storytime at the Field. My name is Kathy, and this is Joanne, and our guest featured animal today is Gur, the corn snake. Today we read The Greedy Python by Richard Buckley, illustrated by Eric Carl. Thank you to Simon & Schuster for allowing us to read this story online. And thanks for coming to Storytime at the Ecotarium. Bye!